Hey guys, welcome back. In today's review, we're going to be looking at the Riverasi HO scale Virginian heavy steam locomotive. This is the 2666, the road number is 900. Now, this is a Blue Ridge locomotive. Depends on which road you're dealing with. Obviously, the Virginian called this Blue Ridge. The other, another road called this the Allegheny. So, you've got a couple options here, but this locomotive is brand new released from River Aussie. Let's take a look at what you get inside with the unboxing here. So let's get started. Now MSRP on this locomotive is $599.99, but I have seen this around uh, the internet for anywhere from $450 to $550. Well, some folks are surprised to know that River Aussie still exists. They are in the Hornby line, so there's lots of stuff to be found by River Aussie. I've got a spec sheet here that gives me some information, and then I'm going to go ahead and open up this foam and get to the actual locomotive here as you see in this box completely surrounded by foam you've got uh, nice plastic inserts we'll go ahead and pull this out see what you get first of all I'll start with the locomotive itself pulling this out of the box for the very first time immediately notice that there is a nice weight to this locomotive, a really nice weight. That's probably due to the die cast metal chassis and a lot of details popping out at me right here on this locomotive. A lot of nice detail. Under the locomotive, we've got some paperwork we'll go over in a second. Let's go ahead and get the tender out of the box. Then we'll get the packing off to the side. Take a look here. Tender slides out of the plastic, just like most model railroad items you get. It's got an inner plastic and an outer plastic. And this is on the bottom. Just trying to find the tab here. Nice coal load on the tender. We'll look over detail later though. And lastly we have another box which has an additional cab inside it looks like. And some more detailed parts. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute. Let's go ahead and get the packaging out of the way and get this locomotive on the rails. Let's look at the pin connections for the tender of the locomotive real quick. What we have here is just appears to be a six pin plug and this plug simply into the locomotive. Six pin plug, pretty simple. Male and female ends here. You're going to want to make sure that the plug pins are aligned correctly because they do sit lower so they're at the bottom so you don't want obviously the receptacle to be at the top when you're trying to plug something in the bottom you're gonna get some mashed stuff mashed up plastic here and then there's this little draw bar simply simply pops on here without any issue you just simply put it on the side it's good to go so now that's connected, let's get on the track, start taking a look at some detail. Now that everything's on the track, let's take a look at some really nice details on this Allegheny, or in this case, Blue Ridge steam locomotive. This is Virginia 900. It's a 2666. The last trailing trucks, which I'll show you later, there's uh, three sets because there's a lot of weight on that cab and to get the maximum horsepower which I believe was 7500 horsepower out of this they really needed some weight to sit down on those trailing trucks but let's go ahead and take a look at some detail like I said you've got the number boards here they do not appear to be lit number boards same thing with the marker lights those are Fox Paul marks marker lights they're just white painted um, marker lights but a lot of detail on this locomotive look at the detail up front all the handrails the headlight itself, which is a nice, bright, crisp white, which I'll show you. Number 900 
the cab number is up top on the front. Look at all the handrail detail, the valves and piping detail along the side. You got that nice bright white running board stripe, the nice white wall tires, all the valve gear along the side, side rods and things like that. Looking at the front, you've got a coupler pocket where you can install a coupler. You've got the ladders going up the front. The front leading trucks, a pair of those. It's where you get the two, the six, the six, and the six of the rear, rear trucks. You've got the smokestack, which is not um, operating smoke out of the box. I don't know what it would take to get smoke in this locomotive, but there is not smoke operating out of the box. You've got a lot of detail up top on the locomotive, including the Dynamo, several other bells and whistles, get it? <laughs> Put lots of detail, Virginian emblazoned on the side right here of this area of the locomotive, the handrails nice and sturdy along the side for the crew. Just real great detail on this locomotive. Let's go ahead and show an up close view of the boiler and the cab and work our way to the tender with more detail. So as we work our way to the cab, I had to shed some additional light on this locomotive so you can really see some of the details on the rear end, trailing end of the locomotive itself. You've got some really nice rivet detail on the firebox area here. These are the three trailing trucks I was talking about earlier. This locomotive has so much weight they needed three trailing trucks where a lot of times you'll see two or one on a steam locomotive. Well, three pairs anyway. You've got the d Dynamo I mentioned earlier. A lot of detail up here. You can just see that River Aussie really took their time with this. Now, you've also got uh, the cab window here, which is not does not open or close. But the interesting thing about this Virginian is it comes with another cab. Now this cab here in the box, actually the windows may open and close because this, this cab here in the box, the windows do adjust. So I would say they open and close. The reason there's two different cabs is because you have smaller radius curves and one cab has a more extended uh, back lip than the other one as you can see here. This back lip is a lot shorter than this one. Helps with radius curves, tighter radius curves. By the way, the radius curves they recommend no more than a minimum of 22 or no less than a 22 inch curve. And one other thing I did forget to mention is that the there is a DCC ready version of this. Instead of the 599 MSRP, you're dealing with 479.99. Let's go ahead and continue on our way back. Here is where you see the wiring harness that's connected. Real simple, six pin plug. Just simply plug it in. You slide the draw bar on. Real simple to do. You see that in a way it kind of works itself in there and looks like more of the wiring more of the piping and things on the model detail. However, I did notice that you can work that those wires further under the locomotive so that they're not sticking off to the side like they are here. I just wanted to get this ready to go quickly as possible for you as we continue looking at this locomotive. Now, the roof vent here is open and closed. I'm gonna try to, yep, see, there we go. I got the windows open and closed, so you got windows it open and close pretty easily. Working our way back, you've got the nice coal load here, along with the four separate hatches here, and some separately applied details. Nice rivet detail jumps out on both the boiler and the tender, and you've got Virginian nicely printed along the side there with some white well white wall tr trailing truck wheels on or trailing wheels on the tender as well. Let's go ahead and move to operation. One other thing before we go though, you can see that there's a coupler cut lever in the back along with a coupler, a uh, nice um, metal trip pin, separately applied ladders, things like that. A lot of separately applied detail, a lot of detail jumps out at me on this locomotive. And then the weight is just excellent. You've got great weight on this locomotive uh, right out of the box. So I can imagine, even though I'm not up to full capacity, 
with my layout that it can pull quite a load. Let's go ahead and get in operation. So I'm going to power this locomotive up just by applying track power. ESU lock sound is what is behind this sound in the steam locomotive. It's some of the best steam locomotive sounds I've heard, especially with that ESU really taking things by charge this year, making some great improvements. We'll show you the headlight later, but let's go over the bell and whistle, and then we'll go over operation on actually slow speeds. So the bell, as you hear, actually kind of starts off at a low tone and picks up, and when you turn it back off, it slowly goes back off, stops ringing. You can tell it's like the swinging motion inside the bell, so it's a really neat feature. Real great sound from that bell. Let's go ahead and listen to the whistle. So turning it on, it quills on. Turning it off, it has a quill with an emphasis, and then back off. One more time with the whistle on the long whistle. I'm going to turn it on, and then I'm going to tell you when I'm about to turn it off, so you can see the, or hear the differences. So it's on. I'm about to turn it off right now. So a little emphasis and a quill and then it's back off. Let's go in with the short whistle here. Actually, this is not a, this doesn't have a short whistle, I'm sorry. So that's the whistle, you just have to do it a little quicker if you want the short whistle. Like that. So it'll just quickly cycle through, you hit the button on and then off real quick. So those are the two main sounds. Now we've got some other sounds I'll cycle through real quickly. I do not have a guide, which we'll go over, so we don't know which functions what on these ESU decoders, and I don't have a cheat seat, but you can listen to some sounds. Seems like that may be coupler clank. Steam hiss, maybe. That's a five. F six. F8 is mute. F9 is obviously cab chatter. Let's see if there's any other cab chatter when I hit that again. Yeah, so it looks like it's just one phrase out of that F9. F10 is just pre-programmed one short hoot, toot. F11, this is F12, let's see. Okay, so it seems to drop off around F11. It just gives you some sounds. Let's go ahead and go into operation directly. I'm going to move it side by side and then I'm going to show you the headlight and taillight and we'll wrap this review up. We're going to go ahead to 
Let's do a couple speed steps here. Check out the motor control. Pretty good motor control. Five speed steps. Seven. Ten. Reverse direction here. And when you stop, it does have brake squeal. That's pretty good motor control, real nice out of that lock sound, uh, that ESU decoder there. Now I'm going to go ahead and go forward one more time with the chuffs, have a quick grade crossing with the bell, let you get the full experience, and we'll take a quick look at the headlight and the taillight and wrap this review up. Go back a little further here. And here we go. I think that sounds pretty amazing coming out of this ESU decoder. And now, let's silence this beast and wrap this review up. Showing you a couple quick things. We'll look at headlight and tail light as I'm talking about some features here. So what we have there is the nice LED headlight. As you can see, you get a front view of this Virginian locomotive. Shed some light on here, and you'll be able to see all the detail pop out. And when we swing around to the back, go along the side here real quick. I'm going to swing around to the back, make sure the tail light's on. Take a look back here, and you get the same thing in the back. So you get some nice detail being shown back there. Real nice detail overall. This locomotive is pretty cool. So for an MSRP of $599.99 and your online retailers and brick and mortar hobby shops with $450 to $550 prices, the metal die cast chassis the real nice ESU lock sound. I think this locomotive is definitely worth it. It's got nice weight, nice sound, smooth operation. Really good job by River Rossi doing what they did with this Virginian 900 Blue Ridge locomotive. Now they've got, like I said, the $599.99 option, which was the DCC with sound, or for around $479.99, you can get the Virginian Blue Ridge number 907 that's DCC ready. Now, HR2407 is the 907 DCC ready number if you're trying to find the best deal. HR2408, Virginia Blue Ridge number 900 that you see here. Overall, great job by River Rossi, great product. I'm really impressed, even though it's not my steam era. What happened with these Virginians is unfortunately they were scrapped in the 60s. I believe every one of the Alleghenies was, I'm sorry, the Blue Ridges were scrapped in the 60s uh, or by 1960. So unfortunately they're all gone from us, but the I have seen an Allegheny in person and they are beasts, huge locomotives. Again, it's very simple to see why you need those three pairs of trailing trucks there under the cab. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. 
Check out my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash HO Scale Product Reviews. And we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.